All right, welcome back everyone for another deep dive. Always exciting to dig into something new. And today, we're looking at something that you might not think is very exciting. Yeah, a wall detector. But trust me, this thing is a bit more high tech than you might expect. Oh, is this about that Bosch Truvo second gen detector? It is actually, yeah. Yeah, I saw that review. We're going based on an in-depth review we saw. It seemed pretty impressive. Yeah, and it's got some features that I think, even if you're a seasoned DIYer, you might be surprised by. Hmm. Like what? Well, like, okay, this isn't just like your grandpa's stud finder. Right. This thing is digital. It can locate live wires, which is pretty crucial if you ask me. Well, absolutely. Got that safety here. Just don't want to be drilling into anything that could cause serious damage. Exactly. You know, or even injury. Definitely. But the thing that really got my eye was this idea of parking assist logic. Yeah, I saw that too. What with that? Well, it's kind of a clever concept, right? Like... Think about it. When you're parking your car and you have those sensors, right. the beeping gets faster as you get closer to an obstacle. Yeah. So this detector, it uses the same principle. So as you get closer to a wire. Exactly. The sound changes. It guides you towards the target. So it's not just marketing fluff. No, it seems like a legitimate feature. But the question is, is it accurate? Well, that's what we're here to figure out, right? How does it know the difference between like... A metal pipe and a live wire. Right. Good question. And that's where the different detection modes come in. Okay. You can switch between metal detection and live wire detection. Makes sense. And to make things even clearer, it uses separate LEDs okay. to tell you exactly what it's found. So you're not just guessing based on a beep. Exactly. You know what's there before you start drilling. Right. Because that's the whole point, right? Yeah. Safety first. Absolutely. You want to know what's behind the wall before you go poking holes in it. Now, the review... It went into some detail about how this thing actually works. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, it uses active sensing, I think is what they called it. I think I remember reading about that. It sends out a signal and then analyzes how it bounces back or reflects back. Interesting. Yeah, and that's how it figures out what's there and how deep it is. So there's some real tech behind this. Yeah, it's not just a fancy stud finder, that's for sure. No, it seems pretty sophisticated. Now, they did say it can detect live wires up to 50 millimeters deep. Okay and metal up to 70 millimeters. Uh -huh. Is that enough, do you think, for most DIY projects? Well, it depends on the project and the walls, right? Yeah, like some walls are really thick, especially in older houses. That's true, yeah. I'm just thinking, like, would it be enough for those situations? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, the review did say that those depths are pretty standard for this type of detector. Right. Yeah. But, of course, professional-grade detectors can go much deeper. So if you're doing something really complex... Yeah, like trying to trace wiring in a really old house. <laughs> you might need something more heavy-duty. Something that can see through all that plaster and lath and whatever else is in exactly. there. Exactly. Something with a bit more power. But for your average DIR. Yeah, for like hanging shells, putting up pictures. Uh, basic stuff. This is probably more than enough. Probably sufficient. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, so it seems like a pretty decent tool for the everyday DIY enthusiast. Definitely, especially for the price point. Yeah, we didn't even talk about the price yet. That's a whole other discussion. Another time, maybe. Another time. I mean, it's like with any tool, right? Mm. Knowing its limitations is just as important as knowing what it can do. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of which, the review, Yeah. they actually went into some of the pros and cons. Okay, lay it on me. What did they say? All right, so... On the plus side, yeah. they were really impressed with how easy it was to use. Okay. Apparently, it's just like a one-button operation. Really? Yeah. No complicated menus, no settings to mess with. That's nice. Keep it simple. Right. And they also mentioned that it calibrates itself. Oh, wow. Automatically. So you just, like, turn it on? You put it on the wall, and it's ready to go. That's pretty slick. Yeah, it's pretty convenient. I could see how that would be appealing to a lot of people. Especially if you're not, like, super tech savvy. Right. You don't want to be fiddling around with a bunch of buttons and settings. Exactly. You just want it to work. All right. So that's the good stuff. What about the downsides? Okay, so no tool is perfect. Right. There's always going to be some trade-offs. That's true. One thing they pointed out was that while it's accurate, yeah, it's not as sensitive as some of the professional grade detectors. Okay, so it's like good enough for most things. Right, but if you need like super precise readings, yeah, you might want to invest in something a little more high end. So it's not like a high precision instrument. Yeah, think of it this way. Okay. It's like a good all purpose kitchen knife versus a specialized chef's knife. I like that analogy. Both have their uses. All right.
Right. But you wouldn't use them interchangeably. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So what else? Any other downsides? Uh, the only other one they mentioned was battery life. Ah, uh, yeah. Like most battery-powered tools. You got to keep those things charged. Exactly. Got to replace them eventually. Did they say how long the batteries last? They didn't go into specifics, okay. but it's something to keep in mind. Yeah, especially if you're using it a lot. Right. If it's your go-to tool. It's always the trade-off with cordless tools, isn't it? Convenience versus battery life. Yeah, you get the freedom of movement, but then you're tethered to the charger. Exactly. But overall, it sounds like the pros kind of outweigh the cons here. I'd agree with that. Especially for someone who's just, you know. Doing basic stuff around the house. Yeah, your average DIR. Hanging pictures, putting up shelves. That kind of thing. It seems piece. like it would be a good tool for that. And that brings up an interesting point. But what's that? Who is this tool really for? Hmm, good question. Because the reviews seem to be targeting, you know. By why enthusiasts? Yeah, but I feel like it could be useful for a wider audience. Oh, I agree. It's not just for people who are already like comfortable with tools. Yeah, or like home repair experts. It's for anyone who wants to, you know, understand their living space better, feel more confident about doing things themselves. Exactly. Like imagine being able to hang a picture. Yeah. Without worrying about hitting a pipe. Oh, hey. Or like running a wire without being scared of getting electrocuted. Right. It gives people a sense of control over their homes. Yeah, exactly. And that can be really empowering, I think. I think so too. It can change the way people approach their living spaces, make them feel more connected to their home. Absolutely. It's hmm. like instead of being intimidated by potential hazards, yeah, you feel confident about taking on challenges. It's like it almost democratizes home improvement. That's a great way to put it. It takes something that used to require like specialized knowledge. Yeah, or a lot of experience and makes it accessible to everyone. It's really interesting to see how technology is changing things. It is. Yeah, it's making things easier, safer, and more accessible. For sure. It's kind of like uh like GPS navigation. Oh yeah. Right. It used to be you needed a map. Yeah, or a really good sense of direction. Exactly, but now... You just plug in the address. And you're good to go. It takes all the stress out of traveling. It makes it more enjoyable. Yeah, it's like having a co-pilot in your pocket. That's a great analogy. And I think that's a key takeaway here, right? Mm. Technology can be a powerful tool mm. for empowering people. And making their lives better. Exactly. So before we wrap up, yeah. any final thoughts about this Bosch Truvo? You know, I think the key takeaway for me, yeah. it goes beyond just this specific tool. Right. What's really exciting is how accessible this kind of technology is becoming. Mm. It encourages us to be more curious about how things work. I like that. And it empowers us to take on projects. Uh, that we might have been intimidated by before. Exactly. It's about fostering a mindset of exploration and self-reliance. I love that. That's a great point. I think that's really the heart of it. Yeah, it's like, give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach a man to fish. He eats for a lifetime. Right. And in this case, the Bosch Truvo is the fishing lesson. I like that. It's about giving people the tools they need. To be more self-sufficient. Exactly. And it's not just about home improvement either. Right. This applies to so many things. Learning to code fixing your bike. Even just understanding how your appliances work. There's just something satisfying about figuring things out for yourself. It's about taking ownership. Not just of your stuff, but of your own capabilities. Right. And tools like this, they're making it easier. To break down those barriers. That might have held people back before. For sure. And it's not just the practical benefits either. There's like a psychological boost. Definitely. It builds confidence. Changes how you see yourself. Makes you feel more capable. Mm. I'm thinking about all the times I called a professional. For something you could have done yourself. Yeah. In hindsight, it's like, why did I even bother? We've all been there. But the more we experiment, the more we learn. The less intimidating things become. Well said. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. We have. Yeah, it's been a good deep dive. Started with a wall detector. And ended up talking about what? Self-discovery. Pretty much the beauty of a deep dive, right? You never know where it'll take you. Exactly. So to our listener out there. We hope you've been inspired. To tackle your next project. Or any challenge, really. With a little more confidence. And a lot more curiosity. Remember, there's a whole world out there. Just waiting to be explored. And as always, thanks for diving deep with us. <laughs>